So I don't, I don't know what I'm going to title this video yet, but uh, I'm going to go over... Most people, there's a wide variety of definitions of uh, overdose, you know, the word overdose. Some people consider an overdose, you're dead. Some people consider it like you have to get revived by Narcan or else you're dead. Um, I guess that would kind of be the, the same thing. Some people, like, you have to go to the hospital. My definition is just you have too much and you're passed out unresponsive. Like, if somebody was there and tried to wake you up, you wouldn't wake up. Um, unless, you know, eventually you might wake up or... And that does happen. You know, I'm going to get to that. Or, um, you know, you need Narcan to wake up. So, I told this story right around the time when I first started this channel. When there were quite a few less people here. So, I'm going to gonna go back. I mean, I think I have a few hundred videos at this point. But this was about three and a half, four years ago, uh, I was working at a grocery store and, and this is a great reason. I think the last time I told the story, I titled the video, uh, a great reason not to do fentanyl in like 2022. I think it was in 2022. So my ex gets a bag of dope and I shoot up said bag of dope, the entire bag. And went great, felt great, everything was good, went to work, and came back on break, because I lived really, really close, like three, four hours later, and when you use IV drugs, it's a common thing to kind of, you know, it's kind of good to the last drop, like you, you kind of, you do the bag, and you want a little more, you can get some water, and put it in the, and I'm going to use um, graphic uh descriptions of drug use so just be aware of that if you're squeamish if you don't want to hear that if it's going to trigger you um i would advise you to click away um so you put water just plain water in the syringe you wash the bag out because there's like crumbs left in the bag and then you can wash the uh the cotton that you use to filter the uh the mixture when you suck it back up into the syringe so i did that um, washed the bag out, washed the cotton out a couple times and got, you know, whatever was left in there. There must have been, now keep in mind, this is the same empty bag, the same cotton that I used before. Um, there must have been just a few micrograms of fentanyl that got stuck in there. Um, because when I did that, I remember feeling like, I remember thinking like, wow, this is way better than I thought it was going to be. And that's basically the last thought that I remember. The next thing I remember, I'm standing up at the sink. I did it in the bathroom. My ex was watching my kid outside. Uh, standing up at the sink in the bathroom with my ex yelling at me. Um, pissed off because apparently what happened when I, when I thought that thought, um, at that point, I fell out. I fell on the floor and I fell, I was wedged up against the bathroom door. So I was out cold, unresponsive. And my ex was trying to open the door. She was trying to call for me. I wasn't answering. She couldn't get the door open because my body was in the way. I was uh, like 200 pounds at that point. Um, and she's not very, not very big. And uh, yeah, so basically I fell to the ground woke up stood up and put my hands on the counter and started talking before i knew what was going on i did all that like basically unconsciously um which is pretty wild to think about and um you know that was a couple days that was kind of what led to me getting my kid taken away so i'm going to rewind um years before this i was getting heroin off the uh the dark net the old silk road that got shut down by the fbi and i was getting it i was getting black tar pre-mixed in a little sterile vial the guy would put it in a bag of uh 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 jeez uh, uh, animal crackers and like reseal the bag put it in there with a with a letter saying it was like a thank you gift so like the stealth at this place on, on the dark net is pretty wild but anyway it was really really good and I don't know how many times I 
I don't know how close to death I was at that point. Like, I woke up on my own, but her mother insisted on calling the ambulance, and I went to, you know, they took me to the ER, and I was like, okay, but they just kind of, like, gave me, rehydrated me and, and all this stuff. Um, they never gave me Narcan. But um, anyway, like I said, rewind a few years before this, I was doing that stuff that I got off the dark net and I remember one day um I was doing it and like I, I passed out woke up with like one con I had contacts at the time like one contact in one contact out was dried off um the needle wasn't capped um it was like I don't remember I don't think it was in my arm it might have just been on the bed um something like that uh, basically like I woke up like wondering what the fuck happened and that could have been one of those times where I just thought, I thought I was just asleep. I thought I just like fell asleep normally, which is kind of stupid because I wouldn't have left all that stuff out. Um, but who knows how close I was to death. That first story that I told you, who knows how close to death I was that time. Um, you know, granted, obviously I didn't, I, I did end up waking up, but it's, uh, there's a fine line sometimes, um, because I've seen, people that kind of fall out and their breathing gets very very shallow and very very their breaths are very very far far apart and then the drug kind of works its way through their system and their their body regains control they regain control of their their breathing um because that's that's the issue with heroin overdose you, you die of respiratory depression um so you never know um and that's just the one time that i really remember um, and actually there were other times where my dad said that I, he heard me hit the ground and he couldn't get the door open. And then like, I woke up when he was, yeah, there were countless, countless times like that. And, um, the point of all this is like, who knows how many, how many lives I've had and how many times I've cheated death and how close I've been to that, that line that you cross where there's no return if nobody hits you with Narcan um you know I've learned over the years through my travels and extracurricular activities and even with what I do now like with uh with, the, with some of the crazy stuff that I do uh in the gym and this and that and even before playing sports like my body has always been able to handle a lot and uh you know, I'm, I'm fortunate for that because if that wasn't the case, chances are, uh, chances are I wouldn't have made it this long, but, uh, I think I'm going to revisit some of these old dark times and, uh, kind of go back to my roots for, uh, the, uh, content on here. So, um, I hope maybe this was a little bit entertaining and informative and, uh, yeah, it's really, it's really crazy to think about all the times and, and it's, anyway, I'll, the moral of the first time I told the first story that I told in this video, um, fentanyl is literally Russian roulette. Like, I started doing dope in, like, 2010, 2000, yeah, around 2010, 2011, in New England. Um, the fentanyl wasn't around at that time. Um, like, it was still dangerous, but it wasn't, it wasn't the same. And you'll hear this from a lot of people, like, a lot of, I don't know, people that are starting to get to be, like, old-timers now that have, like, gotten out of that life. Um, that were doing it around the time that I was doing it. Um, it's not the same. Like, the consistency in the batches and just fentanyl is measured in micrograms. Micrograms are... Milligrams are, like, almost impossible to dose correctly. Um, like, even unless you have a milligram scale. And even then, it's really easy to make mistakes. Micrograms are one, either one... Yeah, one thousandth of a milligram. They are minute. And... A lot of the shit gets mixed up by, like, these garage, like, you know, basement 
chemists and drug dealers and I'm not saying that they don't try to be careful but they're not necessarily professionals and it's very 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 easy to make mistakes and um, with, with with a dosage that small and you know you see the, the evidence of how dangerous it is is in the increase in heroin overdoses in you know recent years and uh, it's scary it's super scary and I'm someone who's really kind of gravitates towards dangerous things and I kind of like taking risks and um, even for me it's it's kind of scary so uh, hope this was entertaining and or informative I hope some, somebody got something from this and I'll catch you guys in the next one